it's that time to do what we do best every single day. No favors. Eminem, Big Sean. Um, I kid you guys not. I have played this song well over a hundred times in the past three days. A hundred times. Just going to the gym and putting it on repeat. So the game plan for today, pretty damn simple. Go in, train some shoulders. We're going heavy. We're gonna test the boundaries, test the limitations. Rep range is falling between six to eight repetitions. Typical mass building. That's what we're after. Well, hey there. What's up? What's good with it? Hey, guys. Um, so today we're back in the gym, as you can imagine. Um, training some deltoids, some shoulders. Now, it's interesting because from a certain viewpoint, you could almost say my shoulders are one of my strengths. And yet, like in the beginning when I first started lifting, okay, to take you guys back. Um, when I first started lifting, I neglected to train shoulders. And the main reasoning for that was that I had limited equipment available at my house to be training shoulders. And I didn't necessarily realize that overhead pressing or the act of lifting things over your head straight up, um, I didn't realize that that was a shoulder-oriented movement. And so I didn't do a lot of those types of exercises at the time. I did things like handstand push-ups against a wall and stuff like that, but I wasn't as obsessed with shoulder development, yet my shoulders seemed to grow a little bit from doing simple things like my push-ups, dips, stuff like that. I got a little bit of shoulder activation. And so in the beginning, I saw a little bit of shoulder development. And it wasn't really until I got a gym membership where I had the proper equipment available to do dumbbell pressing, um, various side lateral raises and stuff like that. That's where the majority of my development came. And it came pretty damn fast. Like my shoulders, to this day, I don't have to work too hard to maintain them. Um, but I do need to work them in order to keep my strength levels high. Right now, my shoulders aren't very strong in comparison to my past self. Um, they, they're, they're just lacking in terms of strength. Now, I did try doing some overhead pressing. And this is a movement that you guys ask a lot about, like, why don't I do it? I would suggest doing overhead pressing um, in any strength-oriented regimen that you may have. The overhead press is great for mass building if you're doing rep ranges between 6 and 8. And if you're just going heavy in general, the overhead press is a great compound movement to have in your workouts. I personally am pretty, pretty damn weak, and I don't do them often in terms of standing because you know hear me out on this because i have scoliosis and i think i mentioned that before but out of all of the workouts and all of the exercises that i performed the only exercise that seems to really disagree with my body and the way it functions is the overhead press whenever i do this movement during it and after it I feel my scoliosis and I, I don't know if you guys can relate maybe some of you guys have it but I feel my vertebrae and I feel my spine it, it just hurts it it doesn't agree with me necessarily and so I use this exercise sparingly it's not something I do that often um, maybe if I were to do it more often I would strengthen the muscles around my scoliosis making it a better movement and making my back healthier all around. And it's crazy because, like, think about it. Me deadlifting almost 600 pounds doesn't affect my scoliosis whatsoever. It doesn't affect my spine in a negative fashion. Um, what was that? One, one, or 205? Yeah, 205 I got for a single. And that was a struggle right there. That was a struggle rep. Ideally, I wanted to go up to 225 pounds, but I did not want to mess with that after the way that felt. Um, but yeah, like out of all the exercises possible, even squatting, having a barbell rest on my back and squatting down, having a minor butt wink and everything at the bottom of the movement, you would think that would destroy my spine and it would really irritate me. I don't know what it is. It must be the fashion that when you're overhead pressing, all of that weight and all of that poundage, it's met in the middle of your spine 
You know, when gravity's pushing down on you, it compresses all into your vertebrae in a way where it just doesn't agree with me personally. So I wanted to get a little bit of footage of that. That's kind of exciting for me, you know, watching myself do the overhead pressing. It gets me excited and it makes me want to like continue doing them every single shoulder workout. But that's something else that I wanted to mention. The, the simple fact that I haven't been hitting shoulders religiously. Now, based on my own programming that I've written for myself, I am meant to be hitting shoulders once a week, every single Friday. But there are times where sometimes I want to train legs a third day in the week. There's days where I want to train back or chest for a third day during the week. And there's days where I just want to break and I'll take a rest day, you know, on Fridays. It, it, it all depends on what I'm doing that day, how I'm feeling, if I really feel like my shoulders need to get pumped up or anything like that. And there are times after chest workouts and after back workouts where I actually throw in a couple of shoulder movements. Just as you will see in this workout itself, I threw in some biceps and triceps movements because I neglected them in the previous days. And yes, I am back to training biceps again, guys. Um, I really want to just see how big I can get my fucking arms. <laughs> Pardon my French. But that's something that I really want to focus on. And so shoulder training is something I should also be prioritizing in all honesty because I don't want to have these gigantic blubber arms with tiny little capped shoulders. Um, so I probably should be focused on hitting those shoulder workouts every Friday, but we will see where the future takes us. Um, what are we doing right here? What exercise are we even on? Oh, we're on some presses, some alternating shoulder presses. This is one area where I've really gotten weak. Um, the heaviest I think I've went on the shoulder pressing with dumbbells. I'm trying to think back. It was either the hundreds or the 105 pound dumbbells for a set of like three or four. Now I, I can't remember, I think there's footage of it somewhere on the channel. So I'd have to go and do some backtracking. It's really not that important to me, but right now I would probably struggle to even press the 90s for a few. Of course I'm not fresh in this workout. I've done quite a few shoulder movements already for that pre-exhaustion and whatnot. And so I didn't have to press as heavy. But the 90 pound dumbbells most definitely would have been difficult for me on this given day. But it, it really isn't that big of a deal because, as I said before, I wanted to go into the gym and do rep ranges falling between 6 and 8. The mass building ranges, right? Um, and I say that, but the overhead pressing, of course, was a strength-oriented movement for me where I went much heavier in weight, forcing me to do lower repetitions. Not really a big deal. I obviously just don't know what the hell I'm talking about. I'm just doing random shit. Um, not really, though. And with this right here, this alternating stuff, I used to look at people that did this and I used to think that they were douchebags. Like, why the hell do you got to alternate back and forth? Why not just press them at the same time? Of course, I'm joking when I say douchebag, but same with people who do push-ups in the gym. It's like you get a gym membership to go do push-ups. It's really funny because I've been doing push-ups like every chest workout as well. So I'm a hypocrite completely. Um, but oh damn this right here bothers me. Let me just say this push-ups where you take four different benches from the weight room if you're taking four different benches to put one bench under one foot under one arm your other foot and your other arm if you're taking up four benches to do freaking push-ups on for a little bit of a greater range of motion Don't do that like that's just horrible in a packed gym nonetheless this just happened probably a week ago, too I don't know, maybe you guys agree with me, maybe you disagree, but everyone has the right to use a damn bench. If you're taking up four of them from the dumbbell rack station, I don't know, I'm just rambling on here. So we moved on to some straight bar front raises. Look at the traps moving, look at the delts. You can see a little bit of some cuts in there. A little bit of the details of the front deltoid. Nothing too extreme. But I try to use a little bit of momentum in this exercise. And I'm really not even going really heavy. Um, I think it's Arnold. It was Arnold in Pumping Iron when he was doing his front raises with dumbbells. He would take the dumbbells and he would raise them so high to the point where his arm was straight up. Like straight to the ceiling. Perpendicular to the floor. Um, 
I don't know. That's the way that I do them. I try to straighten my arms as much as possible because you're you're pinching, you're squeezing, and you're flexing your front delt that's that much more at the top, and you try to bring it down in a somewhat controlled fashion, um, only to go up again and do your reps. The, I love doing front raises. I went up to 135 with a straight barbell, and I've used so much momentum, but Jesus was I sore after doing that. And I think I have a video of that somewhere on a vlog or something. Who knows? But I moved on to this little dip mechanism, this dip machine to hit some triceps. And I alternated. I went from a triceps movement to a biceps, to a triceps, to another biceps, to finish the workout. And I think I neglected to show after this exercise, after this biceps curl right here, I forgot to or I didn't feel like setting up my tripod and recording the triceps French press that I did. Um, but I don't think it's too big of a deal. You guys have seen me do those plenty of times. Now, with this little, what do you call this, preacher curl? Yeah, this is more of a preacher curl. I always do them one arm at a time. It took me a little while for my left arm to catch up to my right in terms of size. And that's not something I've mentioned before because you never tell people of your flaws or your symmetry problems or anything like that because it's something they'll always notice. But that was a problem I had for a while. My left arm could not catch up to my right arm. And now it's to the point that on certain days, my left arm is almost bigger. It looks thicker than my, my right arm. So it, it's almost shot me in the back a little bit. So I love doing those type of isometrical movements where I'm having to dish out one arm at a time. And I do that with my lats as well. Like when I have the chance, I like doing one arm pulling exercises at a time. And the pressing, it's not too big of a deal to me because I don't have one pec that's bigger than the other, thank the Lord. I've seen people with like one gigantic breast tissue with the other side looking like a little pancake. So thank goodness I don't have a problem with that. But I have my share of problems like in terms of building like symmetrical muscle and stuff in certain areas. It's all stuff you have to take notice, take responsibility for, and work, work with it. You know, you got to work with your flaws and turn them into your strengths. So that's the end of this voiceover. We're going to go in to a little post-workout shenanigan session thing. Peace out. So after the gym, Tara and I stopped at the store. And in case you guys didn't know, I just moved in with Tara until after the wedding. So we got this closet organizer. Closet. Not closet. Oh my god. <laughs> so we got this because I have so many clothes that it's not even understandable. And a lot of it's hanging stuff. And this is kind of cool because you can put your shoes and stuff on it and you're a horrible camera person. I know because you're taking. This is all my hanging stuff. And all my shoes here, this looks really ugly. So that's why we just purchased that um, little hanging thing, that little closet holder, so that we can hang all this up right here. And hopefully it won't break under the sheer weight Whoa. of these hundreds of different coats, jackets, sweaters, vests. Alright, so here's the wall before because I'm going to show you guys this little assembly before and after. Do it yourself at home after buying it. Okay, we got the rabbi rabbit, the bun bun, and then we've got this dresser thing, all the shoes, and the clothes. So let's see how this looks afterwards. This is something else. I can't even see if I'm in the picture. What a fun time. All right, here we are at the stages where I'm loading my clothes. I already have my shoes filled up. Um, we'll do the rest of it later. Okay, thanks for watching the video. Love you. Peace out. Bye.